The purpose of these videos is to standardize the performance of transthoracic echocardiographic studies and to help the learner optimize and troubleshoot image acquisition. This video will demonstrate how to obtain an apical four-chamber view. We will not perform any measurements at this time or use color Doppler. The second part of the video will provide tips on how to optimize the view. Even in the intensive care unit, you should try to position the patient in left lateral decubitus, unless there is a contraindication such as spine precautions or when inappropriate in case of severe cardiovascular or respiratory instability. The goal is to shift the heart laterally. Often, positioning a wedge or a pillow underneath the right side is necessary to support this position. If possible, raise the patient's left arm above the head to increase the size of the intercostal spaces and to allow appropriate later positioning of the transducer. Try to practice performing the examination from either side of the patient. In ICU, one side may not be easily accessible due to presence of other pieces of equipment. However, Unless you are performing an emergency study, try to position yourself in a comfortable position. The apical four-chamber view is usually found near the point of maximum impulse. Most of the time, the transducer will be positioned between the fourth and sixth intercostal spaces between the midclavicular and midaxillary lines. In the vast majority of patients, this point will be below and lateral to the left nipple. The location of the optimal acoustic window varies significantly with the patient's position. For example, in supine patients, the optimal apical window will be significantly more medial. The transducer marker should be pointing towards the patient's left with a slight counterclockwise rotation approximately between 2 and 3 o'clock. You should direct the ultrasound beam in the direction of the sternal notch. In the ideal apical four-chamber view, the septum appears perfectly vertical. The left ventricular apex is positioned in the center of the scanning sector. All four chambers, right and left atria, right and left ventricle, are visible and co coaptation planes of tricuspid and mit mitral planes are both visible. The left ventricle is not foreshortened. The apex not being centered is one of the most common problems. If the left ventricular apex is positioned towards the right side of the screen and you see mostly the right ventricle, you will have to slide the transducer more laterally. Conversely, if the left ventricular apex is positioned towards the left side of the screen, you will have to slide the transducer more medially. Often, the septum will appear oblique instead of vertical. More frequently, the septum will appear directed from the bottom left of the screen to the top right of the screen. In that case, you will have to either direct the transducer tail more laterally If instead the septum is directed from the bottom right of the screen to the top left of the screen, tilt the tail of the probe more medially. Positioning the transducer too medial with the LV apex shifted to the right upper corner of the screen and the septum oblique is one of the most common image acquisition errors for the apical four-chamber view. Two movements will be therefore required to optimize this view. Slide the transducer laterally and tilt the transducer tail more laterally. If you visualize the coronary sinus and the left atrium is cut off, you are directing the ultrasound beam too posteriorly. You will therefore have to tilt the transducer tail downward to direct the ultrasound beam more anteriorly. Sometimes by doing so, the quality of your image may deteriorate as the ultrasound beam may be obstructed by the superior rib of the intercostal space.
If that happens, you will have to slightly move the transducer within the intercostal space to readjust the ultrasound beam within the space. On the other hand, if you visualize the aortic valve, you are directing the ultrasound beam too anteriorly. You will therefore have to tilt the transducer tail upward to direct the ultrasound beam more posteriorly. In some patients, you will not be able to find any intermediate view between the aortic valve and the coronary sinus view. In this case, from the aortic valve view, try to apply a very small counterclockwise rotation of the transducer. This rotation may enable you to get an adequate four-chamber view. Similarly, in case of poor definition of the ventricular walls, a slight counterclockwise rotation from the three o'clock position may help you get a better visualization of the lateral walls as the transducer will better fit in the intercostal space. Lastly, you should ensure you're imaging the true left ventricular apex and not for shortening the left ventricle. The true apex can be identified by its thin wall and its relative lack of motion. If the ventricle looks foreshortened and more globular than bullet shaped, try to slide the transducer one or more lower intercostal spaces until you visualize the true apex. Of note, in very thin patients, you may have to position the transducer partially over a rib to obtain an adequate view. Make sure not to apply too much pressure as it can be quite uncomfortable. Two modifications of the apical four chamber have been described to improve assessment and quantification of the right ventricle. The RV focus view and the apical four chamber modified for the right ventricle. To obtain the RV focus view, start from the apical four chamber and tilt the transducer tail even more laterally, therefore directing the ultrasound beam toward the right ventricle through the left ventricle. For the RV modified apical four chamber, tilt the tail more medially or slide slightly medially. This concludes our video on how to obtain the apical four chamber view and its modifications. Remember to only do one transducer manipulation at a time and to do very small transducer movements as they significantly change the scanned planes, especially when the structures are deep.